Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, want to take a little bit of a moment to have a little conversation. So I hope y'all in the mood for a conversation because that's what I'm in the mood for. We got a couple of things we're going to talk about. Now, I think I'll be able to pull it up because I'm installing, as you see, Microsoft Office Professional Pro Plus. Uh, basically, it has everything. PowerPoint, you better stop barking at me. Sorry. I have one dog that wants to keep getting out of this little makeshift cage, and I am letting it know right now with a water bottle, no, that it ain't getting out. Sorry. Build them a makeshift a little cage in the living room, cleared out the living room, created a space for them, and have a fence that I was going to use for the solar panel area and I decided to cut it's not it's a pliable fence so I decided to cut this fence so that I can fit it in the living room I made it about a foot and a half too large and they have probably 10 square feet of space to roam around in they're starting to walk eyes are open and <laughs> no one else has died. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, I'm going to show you this, then I'm going to delete this and install this again, this particular program. There is a reason for it. There are some configuration issues that I want to take care of. Now, while I talk about all of this, I want to tell you that all of you need to pay attention because I've had a couple of conversations with people as of late. Now, here's the thing about the conversations I've had with people as of late. I've been explaining to them that I don't have anybody that I can call and go over stuff like this with. Now, some of them are going to consent to what I say, the people who I do call, but the problem is they're on a different track. They're, we're not going to the same station. They're, they're getting off of the track that I'm on and they're going a different route. And that's completely up to them. <laughs> they can go whatever route they want. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm on a one track course. I don't need to get a transfer. I don't need to have my luggage transferred to a different compartment or a different train. I'm staying on this train. There are no detours. The train, the, the lane, the tracks and everything is cleared. All the way, I ain't got to worry about there being no bombing of no tracks and being no accidents because the conductor of this train, I'm the conductor of this cruise ship, and we're going to take you on. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, the conductor of this train is going to take it slow because he doesn't want to have any accidents. He's got a good track record. And he's going to keep that record on track. So, many of the people I bring information to, they want to bring in all kind of other stuff. That's why you hear me saying things like authenticated birth certificates or traveling down the highway doing 85. You know, that type of stuff. It ain't got nothing to do with this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about this act because you need to understand this act for what it is. We're not going to talk about bills of exchange and all of that right now. We're going to talk about the act. So we're going to do a search. Control F on our Windows-based keyboard. We're going to type in T-H-E-N-E-W-D-E-A-L. The new deal. Let's make a deal. The brew deal. I said new. Get that B out of there. See that B always showing up. Always been in other people's business. Just like B ain't it. Ladies and gentlemen. The new deal. Mentioned one time, one time in the entire March 9, 1933 Act. Don't care about the congressional record. I'm not looking at the congressional record. This is page 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, and 83. Okay, that's all this is. This is the highlighted one. Y'all can get on the website. But this is all of them combined put into one page. It froze up on me, y'all, because I'm installing Office. So let's see if we can get it to catch up. I'm going to put y'all on pause for a second.
Now, just in case some of you wondering, hey, why you installed in 2016? This 2022. Shouldn't you be installed in 2021? No, because 2021 likes to connect to the internet. I don't want to be connected to the internet. I don't want to have the incremental stage only on the internet. I want to have the one that I got right now, 2016, which allows me to save a document every five minutes. Why? Because sometimes the computer shuts down and I done did a lot of work. There have been three times I've used 2021 and 2019 that I couldn't save my work. Minimize. I'm going to let it catch up. You see that right there? That means it ain't catching up. We're going to wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you one thing. That it only appears, the new deal, one time. So I'm going to pause this and then we're going to talk about the new deal. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, there's a program that's going to pop up in just a second. It's called Revo. 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 R-E-V-O. Uninstaller. Revo Uninstaller is probably one of the better uninstallers out there. Why? Because Revo Uninstaller will uninstall all those other little files and things. You know how these companies decided that they wanted to leave certain files on your computer so that you couldn't reload their, um, uh, what's that thing called? Um their trial software over and over and over and over and over again well that's what Revo, Revo uninstaller pro does you can get the trial version does the exact same thing okay don't get the newer version the new the newer updated one doesn't work all that well i guess they still have some kinks in it now before i go on because you know i'm we're gonna get to it it's already pulled up uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I go on, I want to let you know about one of the dogs. They are small enough to where they can squeeze their head through by continually remove, maneuvering, 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 and bending the metal on the gate. And it is pliable, so they can bend it. Doesn't take a lot of strength for you to bend it. Doesn't take a lot of strength for them to bend it. But they are some very intelligent, stupid dogs. Sorry, all dogs are stupid to me. But they're very intelligent, stupid dogs because they have... See, don't... don't. Uh, I'm not updating to that one. That doesn't work very well. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the dogs have been bending the metal towards them. And by bending the metal towards them, it makes it more room for them to squeeze through. So just a second ago, one of them had actually gotten out when I turned my back and got out and just laid right next to where he got out at. Just went to sleep because I guess they just don't want to be caged. Okay, that, that's all it is. They don't want to be caged. This morning I got up, three of them were outside the cage right next to where they got out. So we've been doing back and forth like Aaliyah. Okay, and I, I've been having to um, get their attention and put them back in their cage. They've been fighting me, but I've been letting them know. Um, I think it, I don't know who did, who's the boss. Was it Scott Bell? Well, I had to let them know who's the boss. Now, don't email me or text me talking about who no boss is. See this right here, ladies and gentlemen, the new deal? The new and the new deal. Only mentioned once in the entire March 9, 1933 Act. Now, let's get that out of there. Let's um, do a search. We're going to go past these two, and I'm searching for it now. That's one, that's two. Look at that. The search has finished. They only mentioned the time in the whole act. But let's get the gist of the conversation. I believe this is Mr. McFadden talking. It's very important that you guys understand what's going on here. So, like I said, I believe this is McFadden. See, McFadden, okay? Double Dutch bus, McFadden, no. Anyway, we want to know. The people of the United States want to know the conditions of the public treasury, the obligations that are outstanding. We want to know the amount of gold in the United States Treasury. We want to know the amount of gold in the Federal Reserve System. We want to know the total amount of outstanding government obligations. This is the time to draw a line. And may I say to the Democrats here, 
that if you do not draw a line through the treasury operations now the federal reserve operations hold on got to go on up to the top started from the bottom now we made it to the top you will be enmeshed in all the things that they have been doing and they have been doing some things as i have pointed out here to foe we excuse me or we would not be in this condition we are in today blaming it on the treasury and the federal reserve there you go mcfadden now let's pay attention i want to know so far as i am concerned let's get rid of this for right now that this bill represents the ideas of the new administration the new deal i shall help to carry it through if it is that if on the other hand this bill is proposed a uh, and written by some influences that are responsible for this financial situation i will fight it and do everything i can to defeat it ladies and gentlemen letting you know right now that the new administration new deal was represented by this bill you feel me why do you need to go anyplace else how come nobody's using the new deal now wait 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 hold on hold on there are a lot of aspects of the new deal so security act part of the new deal the securities act part of the new deal the exchange act part of the new deal uh, 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 not so fast benny ladies and gentlemen we are not focused on those portions of the new deal we're focused on this portion of the deal why let me show it to you gotta show you three things okay and they're in succession the first thing it tells you and I, I, we're going to start right down here in this paragraph. I'm not going to read everything. We're just going to read one little short thing, okay? We're going to read one little short thing. Want y'all to pay attention? Uh, let's see. The provisions of this act. Okay. Just focus on that because that's all we're going to be focusing on is stuff like that. The provisions of this act. Ooh, look at that. Do you see how they're talking about this act? Ladies and gentlemen, we want to deal with the provisions of this act. We don't want to be running under anything else. Carrying out the provisions of this paragraph. Okay, so what is this act in this paragraph? Because we're only focused on the one paragraph. So let's, let's see what this paragraph and this act does for anybody, okay? I want y'all to pay attention. First thing we know that this act does in this paragraph is it talks about an amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Yay, Federal Reserve Act. So we can include that portion of the Federal Reserve Act that this act amends. Whew, I am so grateful. Now, hold on. Now remember, this is the congressional record. So we can include the congressional record, which amends the Federal Reserve Act. Okay. Wait, wait, hold on. We got one more thing we get to add. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only one date right here. March 6, 1933, and there is a proclamation by the president. If you go take a look at the record, there was only one proclamation evidenced by the president. Sorry, I have to turn around and look because I'm going to have to punch y'all. I got to go see who, who's escaped because I got an escapee. One second. America's dumbest criminals. He's trying to escape while I'm looking at him. Amazing. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a routine. When they get really, really hot and bothered, they will whine. And I have a mist bottle that I will spray them with mist of water while the fan is blowing them, cools them down. They literally relax, no problems. Then when they get agitated again, they, are, they let me know to come spray us again. We need some cooling. And we go through that routine all day. And yes, I'm exhausted for having to monitor them. Uh, by next week, we'll start being outside most of the time. The mother is, they are a little bit stronger now, so they can push her out of the way a little bit. They're 
they can maneuver enough to where she's not going to lay on them to cause them not to breathe anymore unless she's doing it on purpose and I didn't know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, getting back to this. Presidential Proclamation 2039 was the only proclamation by the president on March 6, 1933. So now we can add Presidential Proclamation where they say you all are banking institutions. Lord have mercy. Y'all banking institutions. Hold on now. We're not going to stop there. We have one more thing that we get to add. There are four of them. We have the Congressional Record. That's number one. We have the Amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Number two. We have Presidential Proclamation 2039. Number three. We have this act that Congress is referring to, March 9, 1933 Act. Number four. These are the only four things that are mentioned. The only four things that are mentioned in this act. Now, can you use section 402 section 10 and all of this stuff well let me help you out to make sure you understand that using those sections you're going beyond hold on carrying out the provisions of this paragraph so we have to stay within the confines of this paragraph because it definitely uh, definitely associate itself with March 9, 9, I mean March 6, 1933. Presidential Proclamation 2039. Now let's make sure that that's what this act does because you know how sometimes we read into things. The first provision of the bill validates and maintains the authority exercised by the President of the United States in proclamation related to banking and national um, of the nation issued by the President on March 1933. Presidential Proclamation 2039. Hold on. The second confers upon the president the powers bestowed by October 6, 1917. This amendment to the October 6, 1917 Act. Lo and behold. Now the other provision is the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Hold on. We have provided that any direct obligation of the United States. This is the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. And now you have the congressional record confirming this. This is the New Deal. This is the foundation for the New Deal. However, we're only concerned about the paragraph of the Federal Reserve Act because that's where we're going to limit them and limit ourselves. Okay, glad that y'all all understand that. Whew. There, uh, we, this is on the website. We've already did a video showing y'all where y'all can get it. All right, we have to go to the next document. I've already put this on the SATCOM website. I will take care of it on the uh, AmeriLegion website soon. This is Presidential Proclamation 2039. This is your Certificate of Authority notification. Why? The President gave you authority. He called you a banking institution. Notice right there. As used in this order, the term banking institution shall include all persons engaged in the business of receiving deposits. You want to be a depository institution. Okay, see, banking institution, but all of those federal banks are depository institutions. Oh, mama. Okay, look, I ain't give y'all no information like this before. Okay, because I know some people can go out there and f*** it up for everybody. But I'm giving it because I know some people are going to know what they're doing. Okay? So... We put the important parts in here, but please understand the Treasury. Sorry, give me one second. One of them is caught in the gate again. They don't learn. See, I let nature take its course. I don't have to go and pull them out of the... I let them figure their way back out. And he did. And he's going to try it again. He, he ain't learned his lesson. And then we have another one that's escaping right now as I'm speaking to y'all. And he's going back in because he didn't understand me. Okay, so I, sorry, I, 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 they know I'm on the phone and they want to act a fool. Like I said, they're just like little kids, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to pay attention to this. During such holiday, now, Secretary of the Treasury, with the approval of the President, he's gotten the approval of the President, 
and under such regulations as he may prescribe, is authorized and empowered to permit any and all such banking institutions to perform any and all of the usual banking functions. Here's the thing, they cannot prevent you because they'll be denying you equal protection of law and they would be penalizing you for taking your gold, your option for having the gold. And we don't want that. Sorry, I have a sprayer and it reaches all the way over to them. And when they get the straightness, then they know that, uh-uh, he ain't playing. All right, I told you we got a routine, all right? Anyway, <sighs> permit any and all of the such bank institutions to perform any and all of the usual banking functions. You guys have been able to perform the usual banking functions. You've been able to make deposits and to receive deposits. You've been able to make loans and to receive loans. Okay, that's why you don't need a permit. Hold on now to direct, require, or permit the issuance of clearinghouse certificates or other evidences of claim against the assets of banking institutions. And C, to authorize the direct creation of such banking institutions of special security trust accounts. Did you say special security or you just say special trust accounts? For the receipt of new deposits, depository institution, for the receipt of new deposits which shall be subject to withdrawal on demand without any restrictions or limitations and shall be kept separately in cash, in cash, or on deposit at the Federal Reserve Bank, invested in obligations of the United States, or invested in obligations like T-bills. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry, that one that just got his head stuck, he ain't learned his lesson. He sees me talking, and so he gets drenched. I don't mind. I, it's a full water bottle. Uh, I'm three quarters of the way done so we do the water thing this way they don't get beat up and water ain't hurting them you feel me there you go it's torture the jacksons anyway ladies and gentlemen many of you are going to be i want you to focus on this just like these dogs stupid you're going to think that you're intelligent you're going to think you're outsmarting somebody and you're just going to be stupid because you're not realizing that you can't go outside the parameters of the March 9, 1933 Act. Remember, this originally was a proclamation by the president. This had no jurisdiction over the people. This was a military proclamation. This, the Act of um, October 6, 1917, is the Trading with the Enemy Act. That was a military act. They didn't have any jurisdiction over the people. So he could only do it for four days. He had jurisdiction over the banks because they are financial institutions. They are, what do you call that? An executive branch agency. And so because they're executive branch agency, then that means he had jurisdiction over them. But he doesn't have jurisdiction over you. That's why there were no restrictions on banking institutions and how they didn't need a license or permit. If you don't believe me, go and look at the amendment to this proclamation by Mr. Truman. Okay, that's what it explains. All right, so now that you know that you can be a banking institution, that's where your research should be. Why? Because a banking institution that is a depository institution. You don't have to be under the uh, Federal Repository, uh, what, what that junk is, FDIC. You don't have to be under that, uh, that company. That's only for financial institutions. You must understand that there is a difference between a, hold on, how many times is he mentioning in here? Where were we at? Hold on, because we're going to see it several times. National Emergency, always uh, March 9, 1933 Act. Whenever you see national emergency, banking institution, banking institution, okay? And then we have another, we have banking transactions, bank holiday. You guys understand banking institutions with an S. Look at this. Any other banking business whatsoever. So they took control of how you do your banking. But what they couldn't do after they seized the gold is they couldn't make it restrictive. They couldn't say you have to jump through this hoop, that hoop, and that hoop. They could only make reasonable.
reasonable changes. Reasonable is reasonable. So that's what we're here to talk about today. You see, just like you all have been, your minds have been going off to other things. You've not been focusing on exactly what we've been talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about banking institutions, banking institutions, banking institutions. That's what we're talking about. And we're talking about the banking functions of banking institutions. Why? Because we need to open up special trust accounts. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Direct the creation in such banking institutions of special trust accounts. Because every time you deposit a promissory note into a bank, a bill of exchange, they create an account in your name, but because you don't take charge, because you don't discharge, because when they create the account, they deposit funds into the account in the amount at par. What, you didn't know? Hold on, let me make sure you guys understand. I've already talked about it once. <coughs> Under the new law, the money is issued to the bank in return for government obligations. So pay attention. They don't need to get it from the treasury. Why don't they need to get it from the treasury? Don't the treasury, the mint is the one who prints everything? So of course they need to get it from the treasury. Ladies and gentlemen, when required to do so by the secretary of the treasury, each federal reserve agent shall act as an agent of the treasury of the United States or of the control of the currency or both for the performance of any function which the treasurer or comptroller of the currency may be called upon, for which the treasurer or the comptroller of the currency may be called upon, for which the treasurer or the comptroller of the currency may be called upon to perform in carrying out the functions of this paragraph. They are agents of the treasury. They are agents of the comptroller of the currency. They don't need to go to the treasury anymore. They get to print it up like they were able to do by this act, circulating notes. Okay, but hold on now. They're not allowed to print circulating notes in blank, but they still are allowed to print circulating notes. So when they print those notes, create the account, put the funds in the account, guess what they just did? They just create a debt in your name. And guess what you ain't did? You ain't offset that debt. Sorry. You, gotta, you guys got to follow the rules. You haven't offset the debt. Now, this is the, that's attached to this, as you see. This is the actual act. March 9, 1933. We've attached it. Now, four pages. Okay, you need to read over it. That's your meat. That's your bones. Okay, see, there it is. The controller of the currency may appoint the conservator of the banks because they took control over the banks. All right, let's go on to the bottom because we started from the top. Now we're going to make it to the bottom, all right? Let's see. National Banking Association. You see how that do that right there? And then you talk about depositors and creditors and all of that stuff. Don't be dissuaded by that. Listen to all that language when you need to listen to the original language. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's a contract. It's a deal. Guess what? Did you know that the United States are obligated to honor all of their contracts under this act? The Supreme Court has said it in Prairie. They didn't have to honor the contracts prior to this, but they do have to honor them after this. Go back and read, okay? Oh, look at that. But in the case of any newly organized national banking association, which has not issued common stock, the requirement of notice to and of shares does not apply. Ladies and gentlemen, I want y'all to understand, you don't have to become a banking association. Uh-oh, you see what I'm saying? Pay attention. You got to pay attention. You got to read the act and see what the act says. Follow the act that's written. Look at that. Here's the amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Okay. I put all the highlights there for you. And we got one more. Give me one more second because we ain't finished. Ah, House Joint Resolution. Okay. Now. The reason why we have the House Joint Resolution, it has more than just that on there, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is because that's part of that March 9th Act. That was included on that. I'm not going to take it out. I'll let y'all take it out. Now, this is the War Powers. This is the Senate letting you know 
that the act is still existing as of 1996 and by the way special committee on the termination of national emergency they never terminated the proclamation by resident see in addition to the national emergency declared by roosevelt since the march 9 1933 united states has been declared, declared emergency in fact we are now blah 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 this is 15 pages so we're gonna skip on down skip on down the road ho do 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 okay that is the same document I think that's it. I think we put all four documents plus the Senate report. Where the Senate report said, you got the right one, baby. Okay, that's the ending of the Senate report. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Put the doc put all of it there together for you. But I guarantee you, some of y'all gonna get distracted because the system is very good at distracting people. Just imagine if everybody was focused on the New Deal. How many mortgages would be paid off? How many houses? would be in the possession of the people wait hold on i got a, I got a question i mean i got i'm gonna read this right here because this is important the task of compiling a catalog of emergency power statutes therefore has been immeasurably assisted by use of computers but computers could not replace the need for systematic system, systematic and very laborious hand search of all the volumes of the U.S. Code, statutes at large, and the Senate reports. The following compilation is intended to be used as a working list. See, there's not even a complete list when they say 470. More than likely, it is well over a thousand different statutes as a result of Presidential Proclamation 2039 where Congress gave the president extraordinary powers. But you notice the code, statute at large, Senate report, you see that's their quote unquote, pay attention, preponderance of evidence. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all didn't understand. So let me, let me, let me give y'all an understanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Introducing the Congressional Record. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Presidential Proclamation 2039. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the March 9, 1933 Act. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Amendment to the Federal Reserve Act. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Congressional Records admitting that we're still under the Presidential Proclamation. The preponderance of evidence that all of you should have been compiling all these years. It was done for you. You didn't have to do anything. It's up on the website. Uh, what is it? Uh, Satcom91.com forward slash PDFs. PDFs in all capital letters. And then you go to the folder listed as one. And I believe that folder is called a promissory note. No, no, no it's a legal understanding. That's the name of the folder, and then you go to the promissory note, and then you go to this document, the New Deal, PDF, and there you go. That's your preponderance of evidence. That's your going into court, not letting them change the subject. That's your saying, oh, no, 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 no. This is what the law says. Make them go by the law. And they can't rebut it. Why? Because you did exactly what the Senate did when they put forth this bill. That, because, see the congress gave the president all of those powers they couldn't just take it away from him because there was no provision for taking it away so what did they do well they compiled it to show how technically we didn't have the right to do that okay that's what this is all about that's what you need to pay attention to so you need to put together the same preponderance of evidence that they put together i know some of you're going to want to bring in a kitchen sink and a bathtub and the forks and the spoons and the knives and you are the special stupid people that I'm talking about. Why are you calling it stupid? Because stupid is what stupid does. Forrest Gump's mother was a genius! That woman knew what she was talking about. Because so many people are going to be stupid. Oh no, I know more than what you know. No, because I know in 1954, they sat up there and they said no more. In 1985, they said we're going to keep it alive. And in 1996, they said we're going to pick up some sticks. 
So now I'm adding all of that. That's what some of you are going to do. You're going to sit up there and think you need more than what's here. Instead of studying this junk, you're going to bring in more junk because Fred Stanford is still alive and you want to sit there and keep his memory going. You just want to get all kind of junk and pile it up in your living room and say, hey, this is my junk. My junk outdoes your junk. Which is why you will never accomplish anything. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to give you one little last tidbit of information. The IRS has sent me to collections for $5,000. Now, mind you, I never received any frivolous filing notification, but they sent me to collections. Well, hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me explain something to you. The IRS can't send nobody to collections. The United States government can't send anybody to collections. The moment they send you to collection, that means that they are engaging in commercial business activities. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to I wanna make sure that you all understand that I only operate under this act. I don't operate under any other act. And I want you to understand, because some of y'all ain't going to get it, okay? Some of y'all going to be all missing the boat, jumping. Let me see, where is that at? Okay, I'm sorry, it said a new issue. I, I was looking for it to say new deal again to say, see, it didn't pick it up all the time. I want y'all to understand. The gold is given up by the people. It should be the, used to issue additional money upon which the people will not have to pay interest. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot earn a profit. It's your money. Hold on. Y'all don't get it, do you? The gold is given up by the people. The people gave up their money. In the present crisis, it should be delivered to the government. That's why the government has everything being prepaid, because you've already paid for it by giving up the gold. It should be used to issue additional money. Uh, pay attention. They took the gold, but now they're issuing additional money. What's the new money? Interesting, huh? The m new money comes from you. Hold on, let me let me prove it to you. Under the new law, the money is issued to the banks. The new money. Okay, in return for what? In return for government obligations, bill of exchange, draft notes, trade acceptances, and bankruptcy acceptances. The money will be worth 100 cents on a dollar because it is backed by you are the credit of the nation. The nation doesn't have any credit without the people. It will represent a mortgage on all of the homes and other property of all the people. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be charged taxes on your own property. If you're the owner of the property and it's not commercial property, they can't charge you taxes on it. See, I have the county that I'm in right now trying to charge taxes to my person, but the property is in the name of a nonprofit organization, a nonprofit organization that was established by Congress. How you going to tax? <laughs> It's okay. This is the games they play with other people. They don't know who the I am. So I'm about to introduce myself. The IRS doesn't know who the I am. They think they know who I am, but they don't. See, the IRS, we've been told that FBI is doing an investigation. People investigate me. Let me make sure that we understand this. I am one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Some of the most law-abiding people on the planet. I use the name Jehovah on purpose why because by using that name i can't bring reproach on that name so i am not out here doing something illegal i'm going to follow the law as written why because caesar needs to be paid back okay i'm gonna pay caesar back for all of caesar's stupidity hey i didn't say it now jesus say it pay back caesar's thanks to caesar so give Caesar what he deserves, homie. So ladies and gentlemen, Caesar has said, uh-uh, we can't, we can't charge them interest. Do you know tax is, an in tax is interest? Interest is a tax? You can't be penalized for utilizing their system. They can't charge you to participate. That's illegal. Now all you got to do is go back over what I just said. 
understand the IRS sent something to collections regarding me and a social security number I don't even use anymore but the, <laughs> God I got five social security numbers I just had somebody write me that they're going to jail on Monday because they used a CPN ladies and gentlemen first they didn't get the CPN from us hold on now but they want to write me to figure out how to get out of the mess that they agreed to self-surrender I ain't saying nobody's name I just want to let you know how foolish that is they contacted me on Thursday they have to surrender on Monday I told them and I'm gonna tell all of you again do not contact me trying to get you out of a situation for which you've known about for months and then you want to wait till the last minute and contact me as if I'm supposed to be captain save a whole I mean a person and I that's not me I do not play the hero role. I am not Captain Saber. That ain't me. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, if you got a situation with the courts, I am the guy you come to. But that's a consult. Because in order for you to get the same advice from a lawyer, you'd have to pay that idiot $500 to $1,500. And he ain't going to give you the stuff I give you. He's going to give you the, well, the best thing you can do is sign a plea agreement. You ain't ever going to hear me tell you to sign some stupid agreement to plea so that you, when you get released, you'll be under the grips. And you ain't ever going to hear me say that. There was a young man. There's a true story. Young man who lives in my area. And they were coming after him because they were saying that something had happened on his property concerning a neighbor nothing illegal this is it's a misdemeanor if anything but the misdemeanor can add up to the point to where somebody could do jail time of less than a year but if you add up all four of them the person is in jail for more than four years because they are coming at him with four separate tickets so he brought the information to me and i told him what i did and i told him i'd take a look and i wrote a motion for him now he needed to be in court by the 27th i didn't have a lot of days i had a shorter time than what this person the person who said they have to self-surrender I had shorter time than that but I volunteered to help him he didn't come to me see you people know of my videos he didn't know of my videos he would never heard of me before but y'all done been watching these videos hearing me tell y'all don't be coming to me at the last minute your problems ain't gonna become my problems I'm not gonna be stressed out because you running out of time you're not gonna put that pressure on me Ladies and gentlemen, I had nothing but problems with my computer trying to put his stuff together. Four days. Couldn't get access. Couldn't complete anything. But when I finally did complete it, it was a masterpiece. I told him what to do when he walked into that courtroom. I told him exactly what was going to happen. I told him they're not going to tell you this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to ask a simple question. Because it's a misdemeanor, ladies and gentlemen. They don't have, judges don't have time to be sitting up there hearing misdemeanors. So they're always going to give you a judge pro tem, which is a stupid attorney that they gave the power to act on their behalf. So they're going to give you a judge pro tem or some stupid commissioner. Excuse me. Are you a judge? That's all I told them to ask the person. Are you a judge? I told them they're going to postpone the case. That's going to give you time to get some things together so that you're not rushing. I said, however, they're going to give you a judge. So ladies and gentlemen, they're going to assign him a judge. They've already done it. And there is some ammunition waiting for when they do. Because we know they're going to play games. Look, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard of court? Because he's asking for a jury trial, and they're going to tell him that you can't have a jury trial in such situation. Sorry, the controversy is great. There is a controversy, and the value of that controversy is greater than, greater than $20. Of course he has a right to a jury trial. I'm oh, sorry, jury trial. I, 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 I used the wrong phrase, trial by jury. Of course he has the right to a trial by jury. But we know the courts are not constitutional. I've already explained to all of you, if the judicial power shall be vested in one Supreme Court, don't worry about where it says, and any other inferior court as Congress may from time to time ordain. 
Separation of powers prohibits Congress from ordaining courts under the judicial branch after the establishment of the judicial branch. Go back and take a look at the separation of powers and how one branch does not get to exercise authority with another branch or over another branch. They're all equal. Pay attention. You got to pay attention because you, you, miss, you'll miss it. Go right over your head. So if the power of the three branches is all equal and the judicial power is to be vested in one Supreme Court, ladies and gentlemen, how can it be the same judicial power in inferior courts? They're inferior! So how can an inferior court have the same power as the Supreme Court? So they do not possess judicial power the Supreme Court would have to vest their power in that court. That was the thinking I had in 2012. Well, actually, I had it before 2012 because I was going over that language and it just didn't make any sense. And so I said, wait a minute. And I wrote the Supreme Court of the state. I didn't write the United States Supreme Court. I was going to test it out on the state level. And sure enough, the Supreme Court sent me a letter saying that my documents had been sent to and they named the judge. They gave him their judicial power to hear the case under their constitutional judicial power. Remember, all other courts formed by the Congress are not under the judicial branch, they're under the legislative branch. Those are legislative courts. And pay attention, administrative courts. That's why each one of them have an administrative office of the court. That's why the courts on the federal level are ran by an administrative agency called the Administrative Office of the United States Courts. It's an administrative agency. You cannot mix the two branches. Pay attention. You might learn something. So, ladies and gentlemen, before you file a case into the court and you're going after these banks, I'm going to give you a tidbit. I'm not putting this information out for everybody and their grandmama. Write the Supreme Court. Have your petition already written up said I needs to file this petition in, a, in an appropriate court. Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, constitutional court, you don't pay filing fees. Say what? What you mean I don't pay filing fees? Oh, constitutional court? Ladies and gentlemen, constitutional court, the fees are already paid. You paid the taxes. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. Yeah, they didn't ask me for no so-called filing fees. The only thing he did was schedule the hearing. And I took exception. I'm like, mother, you 80 miles away. I ain't driving all the way over to you. Okay. And then I didn't have time to follow it through. So, ladies and gentlemen, I, I didn't like the guy. I told people I thought he had sunburn on the neck. Oh, if you don't believe me, his name is John Davis. John Davis, he's a judge in, wait, hold on. Hold on. Uh-uh. We, we ain't, y'all ain't playing me for no fool. Hold on. Got to make sure I ain't got nobody's information up here. Woo! I ain't got nobody's information. See how that just timed out. UPS. Okay, got a package I'm going to be taking care of. But let's go. J-O-H-N. One of the animals have gotten out again. D-A-V-I-S. And Rio. R-I-O. R-A-N-C-H-O. New Mexico. Hey. Uh, he got an obituary? Yay! I'm, I'm sorry. No, I apologize. No, I don't. Okay, I did not like John Davis. But, uh, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. We, <laughs> we got to get to him a little bit easier. Because uh, it, it's a common name, ladies and gentlemen. But when I saw the name and I recognized who he was, uh, J-U-D-G-E. Okay. He's uh, He was, I don't know who he is now, but he was a Superior Court judge. Uh, well, they call it District Court. See, 13th District Court. Oh, he, he's no longer a judge. Okay. Yeah, he's no longer a judge, but they assigned the case to him. Okay? Just so that you guys know. And... Ladies and gentlemen, I was about to say it said 2006. That's a lie. He was there in 2012. Okay? He was there in 2012, but I think that he may not be anything no more. Okay? 
Judge Evaluation received quite positive ratings from attorneys, blah, 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 in Albuquerque, a law decree from blah, 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 blah. So this is the judge they assigned it to. If you notice, there was nothing great about John Davis. You don't see any accolades about him making it. Pay attention to the appellate court or the state Supreme Court. There was nothing great about this judge. Okay, he was just a judge. I just didn't like him because he was the judge who handled Francis's eviction. Okay, when we did her paperwork, this was the judge everything went through because she lived in this area. So when I tell you that the Supreme Court of the state assigned it to him, they didn't have to, but they did. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, nobody escaped. There are seven of them. So, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot of tidbits in this video. I wasn't planning on doing an hour, but there were a couple of things that I need to bring to your attention. Finally. Have you ever had a judge tell you that you failed to state a claim whereby relief may be granted? Well, if you've asked for a jury trial, the moment a judge tells you a rights that you failed to state a claim whereby relief may be granted, you write back to that judge. You ask them to reconsider and tell them thank you. Now you need a jury to decide that. What are you talking about? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've asked for a trial by jury, then the judge doesn't get to determine whether or not you've stated a valid claim. That is the jury. When you say, this is my claim, and the judge says, oh, that ain't no claim, then now they just created a controversy. Shh, hold on now. Just pay attention. They just created a controversy. See, Constitution doesn't say what type of controversy it has to be. It doesn't say who gets to bring the controversy. What the Constitution says is that the controversy has to have a value. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. Apologize for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the system wants to play. So all you got to do is say thank you for establishing that there is a controversy. And now I would like for the jury to decide. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, they'll say that only the courts can decide matters of law. Excuse me? Only the courts can decide. No, that's a lie. Where, where is that law written? that only the judge can decide matters of law, that the jury is not capable, that's a lie. Pay attention. Under their law, ignorance of law is inexcusable, i.e., there is no excuse. You cannot be ignorant of the law. The jury, 12 people, cannot possibly be ignorant of the law. That's why they're sitting on the jury. If a jury is incapable of determining what the law is, then that means they're incompetent. And ignorance, they have no excuse for it. So ladies and gentlemen, a jury can decide matters of law. The courts just came up with these stupid rules because they are not judicial branch of government courts. They're legislative courts, which means they go by code, statutes, regulations, and um, ordinances and all of that junk. But the law is none of those. Statutes at large is not the law. The law is the will of the people. Wait, what'd you say? The law is the will of the people. No, nah, the law can't be the will of the people. The law has to be those legislative decrees handed down by Congress. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a representative government. The people never gave Congress the authority to make laws to rule over them. Go ahead. Show me where the people said, we want Congress to rule over us like a king. That's what the Israelites did. Oh, we don't want Jehovah ruling over us anymore. Ha <laughs> ha, no, give us a king like the nations. Yeah, oh, look, there it is right there. Hey, Saul, get on over here and be our king. We need a king like Saul. Yeah, there's not a greater man in the kingdom than Saul. Saul, you are king. And that he told him, hey, that fool going to abuse y'all. He's going to abuse your children. He going to abuse you guys in war. He going to kill people. Man, he going to do a whole lot of terrible things, but y'all want him as a king? Okay. Hey, Samuel, go over there and anoint that fool. All right, he's your king. Don't uh, don't come crying to me. Don't you dare come crying to me when he do those stupid things I warned you about. Ladies and gentlemen, he warned them what Saul was going to do, and they still said we want him as a king. Pay attention. 
Those people said it out loud. We want him to rule over us as king. We want a king like the rest of the nations. The people of the United States did not want a king. They rejected a king. You listen to Washington. He chose president. Well, he didn't actually choose it. Uh, <laughs> it was a corporation. And so Mr. Hansen, the first president of the United States, chose president because he was president of the corporation. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay, but he the, the, the rumor is he didn't want the term king because of what the people had just gone through. And president defined a representative and not a ruler. Don't take my word for it. So once you understand the basics, like I said, if you guys just go to the foundation, and I'm giving you the foundation right here, if you just stick with the foundation, hey, guys, they can't topple your building. You start to pull away pillars of their building. Hey, how many of you guys have seen uh, the big short? And the margin call. I promise you, it is my opinion that the big short is the new matrix of this generation. Just take the big short, go back and watch it, and then think about everything that was said in this video and see if it doesn't make sense why they were able to do that. Remember, the banks weren't doing anything wrong. They were creating securities. They're called mortgage-backed securities for a reason. They created that, invented that. You learn about that in the uh, margin call. But in the second one, the big short, you learn how they just created these other instruments where they could literally bet against the house. <laughs> Why do you think they were in Vegas? Come on now. Y'all got to pay attention. They were betting against the house, and it all started in Vegas. Pay attention. The conference was in Vegas. They were hedging their bets. Yes, I know some of you are starting to get it, but I got it the moment I saw the movie, and I promise you, even though there ain't nobody else here but the dogs, they heard me laughing. They heard me being hysterical because I'm like, man, they let these, this information out there to the public? Yes, they did. Nobody paid attention to it. Neither one of these are blockbusters. Neither one of these movies are blockbusters. You're not going to go in there talking about, hey, get the popcorn. We got some special effects we're going to be watching today. Oh, man, I want to see when they blow up the entire system. Ladies and gentlemen, that information in that video can be verified because it actually happened. Now, look, I'm at 57 minutes and 34 seconds. We're not going to go to an hour. I just wanted to share some information. Now, look, go back. Think about everything that was discussed in this video. This is information I know. This is not information I'm guessing. You, you'll listen to all the other people. See, I can show you where things are. I even highlighted it for you. But you listen to these other intelligent people, like my dogs, they're intelligent too. And guess what happens when you listen to them? They don't show you nothing. They just talk. Now, I, Rob Ryder shows you. Hold on now. I'm going to give Rob his props. I like Rob. Uh, what's my boy, um, Yusuf L, he shows you the information he's talking about. And Jonah Bay shows you the information they're talking about. Taj Tariq Bay shows you the information they're talking about. And you know I'm going to give Taj his props. I've respected Taj from day one. Don't agree on everything, but I have a lot of respect for that young man. Ladies and gentlemen, stick to the people who's going to show you what they're talking about. Do stop listening to these, these morons who are cherry-picking information and then doing videos making it sound like they're intelligent, like they know what they're talking about. You have no idea how many conversations I've had with people about, oh, you can use a 1099A to go buy, 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 uh, buy, 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 buy. Exactly. You can use a 1099A to go buy, buy if you think that that's all it counts, that that's all I need. How, how, how's that working for people? Don't worry about it. They got three years to come back at people in some instances, 10 years. So don't worry about it because remember, that's what they did when people were doing the OIDs. OIDs are legal, but do it according to this information, people. If you pay attention to this information and you do an OID according to this information, they can't touch you. Hammer time. Gotta go. Y'all take care, all right? I'm out of here. Bye.